So right in front of me, I have the Razor Blade 15 base model and the Razor Blade 15 advanced model. These are the 2020 edition. I was gonna make a separate video on each one, but I don't think there's a point. I think it's better to put them in the same video, compare them, tell you the differences, show you the performance, and then this way you can decide which one makes more sense for you. Now cosmetically, from a distance, they look exactly the same. The only way to tell the difference is if you bring them close together. The base model is slightly thicker. It's on quarantine mode. It's, it's, it's getting lazy, so it's a bit thicker. And it also has a couple of different ports. They both have the same amount of USB Type-C and USB 3.0, but with the advanced model, you get a full-size SD card slot, which we didn't have last year and you have the ability to use the Type-C ports to charge the laptop. One Thunderbolt 3, one USB 3.2, you can use either one to charge the laptop. Up to 100 watts, USB Type-C. It's not gonna charge your laptop while you game, the battery will drain, but if you go to bed and you're too lazy to get your Razer power brick, you can use a USB Type-C cable and it will charge your laptop battery to full. Now the base model does not have an SD card slot, but you do get a full-size Ethernet jack, which you don't get on the advanced model. Unfortunately, even though this has the same amount of USB Type-C ports, and one of them is still Thunderbolt 3, you cannot charge the base model using USB Type-C. Now internally, you have to make some decisions because the base model gives you the advantage of having a second slot for a second drive. Both of the drives on the advanced and base have the same read and write speeds, but you do get a smaller battery with the base model. 65 watt hours compared to 80. However, the battery life difference between both of these products is very insignificant. Even using the hardware MUX on the advanced model, which is only available with the advanced model, and switching it to NVIDIA Optimus, I was only able to squeeze out three hours and 41 minutes compared to three hours and 30 minutes with the base model. You have two slots for your RAM, expandable up to 64 gigabytes, swappable Wi-Fi 6 cards, but you do get a vapor chamber cooling solution with the advanced model compared to just your regular fans and copper heat pipes on the base model. Now, does the vapor chamber really make that big of a difference? I think it does, but in this situation, we're just not seeing it. This is running the i7 10th gen CPU. This has eight cores, the 875, whereas this one is the i7 10th gen 750. This is running with six cores. Even though this one has a vapor chamber and both of these laptops can thermal boost to 5.1 gigahertz, this one is maintaining a 2.4 gigahertz clock speed when all cores are under load compared to three gigahertz on the six core part. That's a big difference in terms of speed if you're a gamer. Higher clock speeds provide better frame rates at 1080p. It might not be drastic in a lot of games, but some games you can see anywhere from a five to 10 frame per second difference. Now, if you're a content creator, the two extra cores are nice, but Razer is so conservative with their cooling that they never allow this laptop to get hotter than 80 degrees Celsius. And because of that, this thing is driving like a Prius. Razer needs to get back into the shop, fine tune the BIOS, let this get a little hot, not too hot, We'll get it a little hot. Let's turn this guy into a Lamborghini. Heat management is obviously good since Razer is very conservative. Nothing gets too hot. Fans kick on when you're gaming. It never gets over 55 decibels, which is a lot lower than some of the other gaming laptops on the market. Now, one other advantage of the advanced model is that you get a 300 hertz display. And I know some of you are like, Matt, 300 hertz is not that big of a deal considering a lot of the games we play can't hit 300 frames per second to take advantage of the higher refresh rate. And you're absolutely right but you do get a lower response time, three milliseconds compared to five milliseconds with the 144 Hertz display on the base model. You also get Windows Hello with the advanced model, whereas on the base model, it's just a regular webcam. Now there's one thing I just noticed, the base model has a different hinge system. This allows the screen to tilt backwards more, whereas you're kind of limited with the advanced model. It's not a big deal, like, the advanced model still goes further back enough. It's just if you need the extra tilt, you can do that with the base model, whereas on the advanced model, you can't.
Now the keyboard layout and design are the same on both models. They haven't changed since last year. The only difference is that the shift key on the right hand side is now bigger. It's a lot easier to access compared to the previous one. It was never that big of a deal on the 15 inch model, but more on the 13 inch, but I'm glad to see Razer streamlining it across its devices. The other thing to note is RGB. If you like per key RGB, you can only do that with the advanced model, whereas the base model, you're stuck to using zones. Trackpad size is still nice and big. It's using Windows Precision Driver. It's a fantastic trackpad. So here's the thing. The Razer Blade 15 continues to be one of the best looking and well-constructed gaming laptops on the market. But if you're a gamer first and you're looking at these things, don't even waste your money on the advanced model unless you have to have a 2080 Super. And I think that's one of the reasons they only allow you to spec this up to a 2070 because they know that most gamers would just buy the base model instead. And that's because the two extra core in the advanced model provide zero benefit to gaming. Now, if you're a content creator who likes to game, then obviously the advanced model makes more sense. The two extra cores help. You have the SD card slot, the slightly better speakers, the list goes on. But I do think Razer needs to get back in the lab and fine tune the advanced model because right now, it's kind of driving like a Prius. And I think it has the potential to be a Lamborghini because some of its competitors are pushing their eight core i7 10th gen processors a little harder and the performance shows from it. Anyways, that wraps up my review. If you have any questions about any of these devices, let me know in the comments below. I stream every second night on Twitch where you can get a hold of me on Discord. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.